in the Italian city of Padua, a rich young man named Lutenzio arrives with his servants, Tranio and Bonandello, to attend the local university. Lutenzio is excited to begin his studies, but his priorities change when he meets Bianca, a beautiful, mild young woman with whom Lutenzio instantly falls in love. There are two problems. First, Bianca already has two suitors, Gremio and Hortensio. Second, Bianca's father, a wealthy old man named Baptista Mignola, has declared that no one may court Bianca until first her older sister, the vicious, ill-tempered Catherine, is married. Lutensio decides to overcome this problem by disguising himself as Bianca's Latin tutor to gain an excuse to be in her company. Hortensio disguises himself as her music teacher for the same reason. While Lutensio pretends to be Bianca's tutor, Tranio dresses up as Lutensio and begins to confer with Baptista about the possibility of marrying his daughter. The Catherine problem is solved for Bianca's suitors when Hortensio's friend, Petruccio, a brash young man from Verona, arrives in Padua to find a wife. How coincidental. He intends to marry a rich woman and does not even care what she looks like as long as she will bring him a fortune. Petruccio agrees to marry Catherine, sight unseen. Okay, hold up. Why would anyone agree to marry someone when they don't even know what they look like? I'm going to have to agree with Elsa on this one. You can't marry a man you just met. You can if it's true love. Honestly, how is Petruccio going to fall in love with some rich and possibly ugly girl? Lucky for him, Catherine and Bianca were wicked hot and mega rich, so lucky for him, I guess. I'm guessing you probably want to finish the story. Sorry, I just needed to vent for a second. The next day, Petruccio goes to Baptista's house to meet Catherine, and they have a tremendous duel of words. For the sake of this video, and keeping it PG, we will be skipping the Duel of Fates, as I call it. Hee <laughs> hee, Star Wars reference. Basically, to sum up the fight between Petruccio and Catherine, what happened is they insult each other repeatedly, slap each other on the butt a couple times, and a bunch of other stuff that I probably shouldn't share. When Baptista comes back in and asks how it went, Petruccio lies and says, Oh man, she couldn't keep her hands off me! We're getting married in a week! Now, obviously, it was in a more complex language considering we're talking about Shakespeare, but that's basically the summary, more or less. Even though Petruccio lied, Catherine does not address it, and the wedding is set for Sunday. On Sunday, Petruccio is late to his own wedding. He leaves Catherine to fear that she will become an old maid. When Petruccio finally arrives, he is dressed in a ridiculous outfit and rides in on a broken down horse. He's such a psycho. After the wedding ceremony, Petruccio forces Catherine to leave for his country house before the feast, telling all in earshot that she is now his property and that he may do with her as he pleases. I don't know about you, but if my future husband carried me off like that, there would be some serious issues. Once they reach his country house, Petruccio continues the process of taming Catherine by keeping her from eating or sleeping for several days. He pretends that he loves her so much he cannot allow her to eat his inferior food or sleep on his poorly made bed. Poor Catherine, you can see how mean her husband is, right? She can't fight back. Catherine is alone in his house, far away from any potential help, and he's not going to stop what he's doing out of love, of course, until she starts acting the way he wants her to. Back in Padua, 
Lucentia wins Bianca's heart by wooing her with a Latin translation that declares his love. Hortensio makes the same attempt with a music lesson, but Bianca loves Lucentio, and Hortensio resolves to marry a wealthy widow instead. Meanwhile, Tranio secures Baptista's approval for Lucentio to marry Bianca by proposing a huge sum of money to lavish upon her. Baptista agrees, but says that he must have this sum confirmed by Lucentio's father before the marriage can take place. Tranio and Lucentio, still in their disguises, feel there is nothing left to do but find an old man to play the role of Lucentio's father. Tranio enlists the help of an old schoolmaster. Unfortunately, as a schoolteacher speaks to Baptista, Lucentio and Bianca decide to overcomplicate the situation. By eloping. Catherine and Patricio soon return to Padua to visit Baptista. On the way, Patricio has broken Catherine's spirit enough so that she agrees with everything he says. The sun's the moon? Sure thing! That old guy who's secretly Lutencio's real dad is actually a beautiful young virgin? If agreeing with you makes you treat me like a human being, then sure thing, buddy! In case you were lost, Vincentio, Lucentio's father, was on his way to Padua to see his son when he ran into Catherine and Petruccio. Once in Padua, Vincentio is shocked to find Tranio masquerading as Lucentio. To complicate the situation even further, the lovebirds, Bianca and Lucentio, arrive to spread news of their marriage. Eventually, after much discussion, both Vincentio and Baptista finally agree to the marriage. At the banquet following Hortensio's wedding to the widow, the other characters are shocked to see that Catherine seems to have been tamed. At the end of the play, the three new husbands stage a contest to see which of their wives will obey first when summoned. Everyone expects Lutensio to win. Bianca, however, sends a message back refusing to obey, while Catherine comes immediately. At Petruccio's command, Catherine gives a long speech advocating the loyalty of wives to their husbands. Everyone acknowledges that Petruccio has truly won an astonishing victory, and the happy Catherine and Petruccio leave the banquet to go to bed.